somebody who doesn't know about your background looks at your record and so it's like it's just some Irish bloke 50 50 record he's not all that yeah. but somebody who's followed your career and knows like what you've done since you've dropped out to fly away well it's a different story really isn't it yeah that's a back in the um, was a, a years ago anybody who <laughs> was looking for a fight just used to ring me and she used to just jump in with anybody when there was a draw didn't really care went home we even got home, went to the, straight to the pub after the fight, it was just one of them, you know. But now after the last one, I moved to Andy's gym, Team Roy now, um, we took things a little bit more seriously. We got the right, the way down to where we really should have been fighting in the first place, but at that time there wasn't, there was no flyweight around, there was, there was really no one around to fight. The, 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 the bantamweight, even at the bantamweight, they were all too big, you know, but look, we found a home now. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you found your home at Flyway, and you obviously like you know you carry power there, like you don't get pushed around there at all. Do you think that there has been some quite high-profile people who've been dropping down in weight, thinking that they're going to have a better shot there, and it's not worked out for them? Do you, do you really know if it's going to work out till the first time you do it? No, you actually don't know. And you come down and see how comfortable you are. I know, like you can do your training. You can get down to probably down to bantamweight, and then do your training, thinking right, I'm still strong, but you still have another ten, nine pound to cut, and you have to go out and perform the next day. You know, so a lot of people are. I think they're misled by what they can, how they can perform after cutting so much weight. My, my weight is it's never really an issue. You know, I never really venture over 64 kilos. Usually, when I got the call. Uh, say with the UFC, I was 64 kilos, you know, so I'm, I'm thinking that Brad is probably heavier than me at the minute. I'm mm. 62 at the minute now. I'm thinking Brad's probably heavier than me. He probably still has a, little, a bit more to cut, yeah. a lot more to cut than I have, you know. So, um, as you say, only time will tell to see can he perform. I believe he would be able to. I don't think that he won't be able to perform at flyweight, but I just don't think he's going to be the same fighter as he was at Bantamweight. Mm. I mean, does it take the pressure off you that you're jumping straight in on the main card? Because if you win, obviously the sky's the limit. If you lose, then you've done them a favour. They'd be mad not to put you on in Dublin. So, you know, yeah. it's a win-win. It's one of them that, look, Brad Pickett, there was a few names pulled out of half before him. When it's, nobody seemed to jump at it. Would you want to fight Brad? I don't know, mate. Brad is a dangerous fella, he's tough, he's yeah, obviously he's won fighting a few times, you know, obviously he's really dangerous. A lot of people didn't want to fight him, but even up and comers that are not in the UFC like myself, I don't see like the way nobody didn't try to jump at him, the opportunity to fight Brad, you know. But look, they're lost my game. We're getting in there to fight. Is there pressure on me? Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on me, but there's more pressure I think on Brad, but at this stage Brad has been in the UFC. He's used to the big crowds, the loads of pressure, you know, so I don't really think that's going to affect them, you know, in any way. I think more, when we get there and look, when you're walking out, there's 20,000 people in the UFC, you're on the main card, the pressure will probably get there. Yeah. To me, more than we pride, you know. Uh, you talked about fans there. Uh, Obviously, you got there on ability, you got there on being a Cage Warriors champion, but you got there on a lot of Irish people like getting on the internet and like causing a nuisance as well, didn't you? Yeah, but look, the Irish fans are just unbelievable, you know. You have to, people don't understand that. Like, well, how I know it was the darts, anybody goes to the darts in the O2, the entire players there, they'd be blown away by the sport of the Irish just singing away for the whole lot. They don't even really care about the darts. <laughs> they're, they're just singing the rap, they're singing away there and drinking away, you know, the Irish fans are brilliant and they get behind every sport and so, they're really so, so short, you know, they're really, they're just not the sport, you know. And uh, I know, like, you're a dad of three, are your kids excited about this? Yeah, well, excited and nervous, you know, like, they're watching the OC last week, you know, saying, Dad, you got to be in there, don't get hit, don't get punched <laughs> around, like, <laughs> like, he's your stage, you know, and uh, you know, I'll try my best, Dad, you know, but, it is what it is. It's a, it's an opportunity for me to go out there and to show like look to go out and get Brad. Brad was at a, he was at no hope. He had no fight there. He had no for him. Obviously, I'm doing him a favour. But look, I'm 
Men are now losing and going out there to try win. Like it's a hundred percent of going to win. I'm not going to lose and that just the negative numbers. I don't do shit like that. But I'll be going out for a fight. Yeah. I mean, look at looking at it like just as a observer. I can see it going the distance because like you can both hit, but you can both take a shot. Yeah. Obviously, he's a great wrestler, but you know what you're doing on ground as well. So, do you see, are you ready for like 15 minutes? Yeah, well, look, I'm as ready as can be. You know, look, I never, I don't venture away from the gym. I never venture away from the gym. I'm always running hot. I'm always out running. Just, it doesn't be a week go by that I'm not out running. Like, I'll always do two or three days of running either way, whether I'm fighting or I'm not fighting. You know, and I'm always down the gym. If it's either teaching class or just going down. Crack with the lads, but I'm always down there, you know. And as the last fight, what we were supposed to fight for Cage Warriors was in uh, December, and that fell through. And the Gomez not like a week, you know. So, like, I was a bit, I was pissed, I was this, but I, I kept ticking over, you know what I mean? I was never the, this and you go, your old self, Pinky and Willow, away over his mistake. You mm. know, we just kept going, like kept going over to Christmas and look something's at the phone in the corner for me. Yeah. It took somebody else to this fortune for me to get in. But yeah. look, we got there. Doing um, Brad a favour. Brad mm. has a fight, we have a fight. Happy days. As mm. as it comes to what Brad is good at he's good boxing, he has got good wrestling, he has got longer time. A lot of people's gonna say, Neil, <laughs> what the fuck have you got going for you? But we've got going for me that we've not to lose here. Just, just like one last thing. I, I actually seen you in that hotel in Newcastle the day after the thing when you were. I didn't say out to you because you didn't look like you really wanted to chat to nobody. But uh, it's cut, like I heard like uh, Gomez on the Junkie Radio the other day, and he, he seems quite bitter about the old experience. But it's kind of worked out okay in the end for you. Yeah, it? well, that's that's the other side of the flip coin, you know. <laughs> that, um, Gomez had a mate, but look. If I had beaten Gomez, I don't think we would have been waiting for me to get in there, you know. I think I would have got in there, I would have been the first name on the sheet to fight Brad Pickett. But look, I took a lot of the Irish fans, supporters and all to dive on it. To be honest, we didn't even know that was happening. <laughs> <laughs> and Andy, Andy rang me and said, there's a good chance of you fighting Brad Pickett here, you know. So start getting ready. So look, we've, we've a lot of people to thank for it, all the, all the fans. Andy, everybody down the club, they were all 100% behind me. I'm going to go out and give me my best shot to try to beat Bad Pick, you know?